We have a great show and all kinds of good things happening. And I've got a question for you, Clyde. Are you feeling stressed? Um, every, you know, Mona, it seems like every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, right around 10 o'clock, yes, <laughs> I'm feeling stressed. <laughs> have you got some help for me? <laughs> I, brother, I got help for you. All right, a new study says that being out in nature can help you. Mm. All right, so spending at least two hours a week out in nature can do amazing things for you. You need a natural setting, and it is linked with good health and well-being, according to a study published in Scientific Reports. Now, it didn't matter how you spent those two hours. It could be some short walks or in a park, or it could be like a long hike on a weekend. However you want to do it, two hours a week in nature is going to release that stress and lift you up. I, you know what? I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. I'm so excited I can't say the word. But, um, you know, I find that there are certain aspects of nature that work more for me than others, but it all works. Now, I like being by a large body of water. Uh, that always calms me. I've been told, in Ooh, fact, that yeah. <laughs> you, know, you see my point, right? I've been told by people uh, that... <laughs> that my, my personality gets a lot more calm and relaxed when I'm by some water. You know, um, I am the, exactly the same way, Clyde. I love a beach. I love cruises because I can look at the water and just see the amazing, amazing nature and, and kind of just what God has done, that, that body of water, I love it. And so, but some locally places that I like to go, Houston Woods is one of my yeah. favorites. You know, we used to do winter hiking in Houston Woods because, okay, you know me, Clyde. I'm not big on sweating a whole lot, but um, so I liked walking in Winton Wood. I mean, in Houston Woods. I also like Winton Woods, but Houston Woods when it was winter. So um, that's a really cool walk. Yeah, I have to agree that one great thing about this community is the parks that are in it and around it. So it, there are lots of opportunities to distress. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do have a lot coming your way on the program this morning, but we are going to continue on that theme, the theme of peace and nature and a local option to find a little bit of both. By now, a lot of us may know the term pollinators refers to creatures that help spread beautiful flowers and the food that sustains us. And now the great parts of Hamilton County is offering an opportunity to learn more about their role in our world and one thing we can do to make sure we keep pollinators active in our environment. And here now to talk with us this morning is Lisa Salapore, an interpreter with Great Parks of Hamilton County. Lisa, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. So did I get it right? Did I, did, what, what, what is a pollinator and, and why are they so important? You, you are absolutely right. So pollinators are animals that visit flowers, sometimes for nectar, sometimes for pollen, and they will spread that pollen to other flowers, and that helps them to produce their seeds so they can spread and make more flowers. But you also mentioned food, and that's a big thing, right? So seeds will provide food for other wildlife, but they also help us make our own food, and it's really important. So as I, as I understand it, one of the things you're gonna be talking to people about is doing their part to sustain pollinators, to keep pollinators around. So what are some flowers right. people can plant that uh, will help the pollinators? Right, you can do a big part. Even if you feel like you don't have a lot of space in your own personal yard, you can plant a small butterfly garden or a large pollinator garden. And it, every little bit helps because every bit of habitat helps these pollinators. Um, you can choose hopefully native plants because our local pollinators will be well adapted to life on those plants and be more attracted to them. And those plants will be really low maintenance because they're already adapted to our local region, like our cold winters and our hot dry mm -hmm. summers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and, and I gather as well the conversation about what we do to control weeds and pests in our gardens if we already have them is important too, right? Yes, and that can be really tricky. Um, if you're trying to be environmentally friendly, you might not want to use chemicals, but sometimes you feel like you just don't have any other options. Um, and if that happens, it, it is okay to use some pesticides or herbicides, but we would just say, you know, those are toxic to pollinators, so use them strategically and be really careful not to be spreading them to um, 
other creatures and plants that do unintended harm. Other than the flowers that we talked about earlier, are there other things that pollinators might be attracted to? Yeah, so other than nectar sources, pollinators are gonna need places where they can lay their eggs or raise their young. For example, butterflies often have host plants for their caterpillars, and that means that there's a specific plant that that caterpillar needs to feed on. Um, that's one of the things that the monarch does, so their caterpillars need milkweed. Um, so you could provide some host plants as well as some water sources or even mud sources. Hmm. You, you know, we hear a lot about what's called colony collapse. That is when bee colonies just kind of just all of a sudden disappear or they all die. Mm -hmm. How concerned should we be about these things? I think it's, it's fair to be um, fairly concerned. However, there are many, many species of bees and, and pollinators in Ohio. Um, it's not just bees and butterflies, it's also wasps and moths and flies and beetles and birds like hummingbirds. So while we should be concerned about the pollinators that are dying, we should also just be trying to support the whole community and the whole ecosystem to make sure it's as healthy as it can be. Well, let's help people learn more about that. How can they connect with Great Parks? Well, you could um, go to greatparks.org slash parks at home. It's a wealth of resources for kids and adults. Um, we even have a special pollinator section where we had done pollinator week um, in June and there's lots of blog posts and ways to connect on there. All right, Lisa Salapur, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you for having me. Mona? Well, Clyde, there's no denying that a good workout can help on a number of different levels. Not only does it keep you in shape, but it also improves your mood through endorphins and can give you a sense of accomplishment. So we want to revisit a favorite exercise segment that we did to motivate you at home. Here's Burn Boot Camp. <laughs> Right now, I want to welcome Danny Kester, the head trainer at Burn Boot Camp Cincinnati. Danny, thank awesome. you for Thanks being Thanks so much for here. having me. All right, tell us what is different about Burn Boot Camp. Yeah, uh, so I, I kind of put it into uh, a nutshell of it's, an empower, it's a place for women to feel empowered, um, to gain that confidence in themselves, to gain like new disciplines, uh, happiness, joy, kind of unleashing their truest potential, uh, oh. and doing this in an amazing community of other women. Um, that are there to encourage, to push, um, to call them when they're not coming to camp every, or, you know, things like that. And that truly for me is the most special part about Burn Boot Camp. And I think it is absolutely what sets us apart from other gyms uh, locally. That sounds really yeah. good. So talk to us about um, what to expect if someone comes to a class. What's a typical class like? Yeah, so our, our camps, we call them camps, uh, a little bit different. Uh, they're 45 minutes, they're very efficient and effective, I would say, uh, and the weeks are, they're every, every workout's different. You're never gonna get the same workout, which is also kind of nice, kind of keeps you, uh, you know, keep, keeps you guessing. Uh, we kind of break the week down by strength days, cardio days, so you're gonna get a really nice mix. Um, you're gonna make sure you're gonna hit upper body, lower body, uh, and a little bit of cardio as well. Um, and they're, they're a lot of fun, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you brought some things with yeah. you. So talk to us it. about these things. Yeah, so uh, we're really big on like using, using equipment in multiple ways. Like you really don't need much to get a, an effective workout. Um, so I'm gonna show you a few different things. This is called a tear core. I use this all the time. Uh, so one movement I really like is called a uh, glute bridge. It's gonna really help uh, our glutes, AKA the booty. So we're gonna go be back shoulders and upper back is on the, on the uh, tear core. My feet are, my heels are digging in the floor. From here, I'm gonna elevate, squeeze the glutes right back down and repeat. Uh, I like this one because I always think our glutes are the powerhouse for our body. Yeah. Another one I like uh, is called an equalizer bar, or we call them burn bars. Oh. Uh, it's really nice for like your grip, uh, especially if you have wrist, wrist issues, like gripping up high here. Uh, we use these for cardio movements, for strength movements. For example, we can do like push-ups here. A little bit of elevation really helps, kind of take some of that load off, especially uh, if you have any shoulder issues or things like that. We can also go through, we call these hop, uh, burn bar Heismans. You'll hop through one, two, three, and oh. repeat. Or, or you, can, you can always, we love modifications. So this is for anyone. My, my oldest, and I, I know you're highlighting National Senior Days. Our oldest, not senior, you know, she's just young at heart, but 68 years old is my oldest member. Wow. She can wow. always step through, take that, that hop. inspires me. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And oh, then I want you to do this one. Okay, I can. Yeah, yeah. I can. Because okay. I, I heard you are a fitness guru, so. Yes. This is a med ball slam, and I okay. think this is a great one to kind of unleash a little bit any pent-up anger or anything like that. And I'm sure you don't, but 
any traffic issues this morning, take it out All on right. the med ball. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, I had traffic issues this morning. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so so I'm gonna pick it up, gonna brace that core, make sure that back stays flat, perfect. And then you're, yep, pull it up. And then I want you to take that med ball all the way up overhead, and then you're going to unleash it and slam as hard as you can. This is that truck that was in the single lane today. <laughs> there yeah. you go. That's it, Mona. <laughs> Perfect. High five right there. Good. Wow. good, good. Oh, that feels good. Yes, yes. I feel better Doesn't getting that, that off good? my chest. Absolutely. All right. So tell me where you're located. Uh, so I'm actually up in Mason. Uh, okay. We have a couple locations. Uh, Cincy Hyde Park is pretty local, and then I'm in Mason, uh, soon to be open in Centerville, Ohio. So come check us out. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, yeah. Danny, thank you so much. This yeah. has been great. Burn Boot Camp. Yes, come see us. We'd love, All right. love to have you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Folks, you just don't know how often we hear about that truck that blocks up that, that single lane. Ah, so it's good to see she worked out that stress. Well, as students across the country start a new school year, results of a global survey found that 88% of Americans believe online learning is here to stay. And as Abby Silver explains, there are a few tweaks a lot of people want to see. After an abrupt transition to virtual learning, a recent Pearson study reveals education may be changed forever. And that on balance, that's a good thing. Um, it allows access, it allows flexibility, it allows us to keep learning no matter what might be happening. Many agree there's still work to be done. Most Americans believe, about two thirds of them, that we're not quite where we should be with online learning. We need better content um, that students can interact with. Teachers need ongoing training. Find great education resources at Pearson.com. Well, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, you know, finances and your marriage, whoa, that could be a recipe for an argument. But we're going to talk to our financial guru expert about how talking about money can actually be romantic. Yes, we'll want to hear about that. And we'll tell you about a place that treats your pet like family. Applehead City Pet is taking all taking an all-natural vegan approach to pampering your pet, and we'll talk to the owner about all the things they have to offer. Keep it right here. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and I got a question for you. Are you and your love partner intimate? I mean, truly intimate. No, not that intimacy. We're talking about financial intimacy. The answer to that question could predict the success of your relationship, but our next guest has some ideas to help manage, uh, help money management bring couples together. And he is with us now, the one, the only, Al Riddick, the president of Game Touching. Al, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, sir. All right, so uh, you had an epiphany while celebrating your anniversary. Tell us about that. Yes, my wife and I recently celebrated our 18th honeymoon, mm. and we typically <laughs> would leave the country for vacation, and it would cost us a few thousand dollars, to be honest with you. However, this year that was not an option, but we were able to create the same emotional experience for a fraction of the cost. We actually did a four-day staycation and spent only about $200, so I was excited about that, Clyde. <laughs> oh, I'll just bet you were. So, so what do other couples draw from this about improving their financial intimacy during this pandemic? Yes, one of the first things you want to do is seek to understand your partner's money language. Now, I know they're, you're probably well versed in their love language, but their money language is completely different. As a quick example, if I say I want to go buy something, to me, that might mean a one payment plan. But if my partner says I want to go buy something, they might be saying I want to finance something and pay it off over a few months. Secondly, you definitely want to ask questions that begin, that don't begin with the word why. Let's be honest, the word why is kind of aggressive and you might not get a good response. However, if you stay in the range of what, when, where, or how, that should create a more pleasing conversation. Uh, also, you definitely want to discuss some of the ways to improve your money system. Everybody has a money system. However, some systems work more efficiently than others. Determine the role you want money to play in your life, not only in the present tense, but talk about how you want money to 
behave in the future as well. <laughs> and last but not least, quantify your financial fitness. By that I mean, are you on track to hit your savings goal for this year? Heck, did you even set a savings goal? Also, how much liquidity do you have in your life right now? Because I always say liquidity is a shock absorber. That, uh, so, and folks need to know that that means basically, for those who don't know, that means basically how much cash can you lay your hands on right quick? Definitely. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your idea with this next question. What inexpensive ideas do you have for couples to keep the romance alive? Yes, sir. One of the things that my wife and I did this year, we actually set up a screen and projector outside of the patio and had movie night. Um, couples could just find things around their home to make things a little bit more romantic, have a candlelight dinner, things of that nature. We even recreated the scene that you would see <laughs> at one of these all-inclusive resorts where we decorated the table, nice candlelight. We even set up some of those little tiki torches as well. And I'm going to enter role playing just a little bit, Clyde. So I played the role of my wife's husband while I was having dinner, but I also played the role of the server as well. She got a kick out of that. Um, also, we went high Hiking. Um, as you know, it's free to get into a lot of these parks and we would pack a picnic and just hike for a couple of hours and then just sit down and, and have a good conversation while we ate our lunch. And All last right. but not least, uh, you definitely want to incorporate some board games uh, if you do have the time to do that, sir. <laughs> All right. Al's are great tips. Believe me. Thanks so much for sharing them. Thank you, sir. When you have a pet, they're part of your family, and you want to make sure they're treated like the four-legged fur baby they are. Well, a local pet store and groomer feels the same way, which is why they've taken an organic approach to pet care. And right now, I want to welcome Desh Rain, the founder of Applehead City Pet. Thank you so much for joining us, Desh. Well, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about Applehead City and what are some of the things you do? Um, well, Applehead City Pet is an ethical pet brand and we do grooming, obviously. It's the foundation of who we are. So we created our own products. They're organic and healing to the skin um, and calming to the senses. We are an eco-conscious company and I'm vegan and I founded the company on being completely cruelty free. So obsession with apples, saying apple head, that's kind of us anyway. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Well, you, you say that you are, you do conscious grooming. Talk about what that means and what the experience is like for dogs. Well, I chose the word conscious to actually describe our groomers and our team. So we stay completely alert, aware, and in tune with the, what the dog's needs are from the time that they walk in until they leave. So it's much different from what's out there right now. Basically, it's like when you go into a spa and you get your, sh your head shampooed and they're massaging your head and it's the best feeling in the world and you don't want it to stop and you're so excited. And your spa specialist knows what you need. They can tell when you're uncomfortable, they move you around and they work with you and they ask you. So our complete focus is around what the pets need um, so that when they leave, they're calm, they're happy, they're excited to come in and out. You know, that sounds great for the dog. Happy dogs. All right, so natural and organic are obviously big for you. So you even have a blog about it. Talk to us about it. <laughs> I do. So it's our mindful pet talk. Um, our whole foundation of the company is around mindful pet parenting. So it's around the same ethics and standard that I had for myself around organic focused, environmentally conscious, mindful choices. Every single choice that we make is impactful. So on the blog, we actually talk about some of the different remedies that you can use at home to take care of your dog's needs, whether they have dry skin or they're chewing on their paws or they have separation anxiety. We like to talk about nice, calm, mindful and organic ways to help those dogs. And that's how we, we treat ourselves. That's how we treat our, our dogs. And that's how we treat our clients. 
All right, I like the way you think. So how can people get more information and connect with you? Super easy to go to our website, appleheadcitypet.com. Of course, you can go to Instagram at appleheadcitypet, and then you can see all the awesome dogs that come in and out of our salon. All right, Desh, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Kind of summery out there today, hot and humid, uh, slight chance for a pop up shower around the area, but most of us will probably stay dry. The highs be in the upper 80s, Mona. Thank you, Clyde. Well, tomorrow coming up on Sissy Lifestyle, we hit the court. Yes, where up and coming tennis professional Katie McNally got her first start and we'll uncover how this club helped her get her start and how you too can learn to play like a pro. All that and so much more happening tomorrow right here on Cincy Lifestyle. And by the way, Al Riddick, you can reach him at GameTimeBudgeting.com. You can reach us at all of those ways you see on the screen. We want to thank you so much for checking in with us today as we begin the work week together. We uh, hope that you have a wonderful Monday, August 24th. Make sure you get out there and make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video, and if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before, or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, we love to say it, make it a great day.